creation of the, the blog and website uh, was also, my constituent argues, based on information that came uh, particularly from the private security firm and outside interests. Well, Mr. Speaker, we can go back into history. Indeed, we can go all the way back to AD 43, uh, when we have the first uh, recorded mention of equality before the law, was by Pericles. But we can, and I'm sure, uh, Mr. Speaker, you don't want me to go uh, in detail through all the years of history, we can eventually get to the Magna Carta and other important integral documents to our constitutional law to establish that uh, equality of law is an important principle. But indeed, Pericles himself sta stated that if we look to the laws, they afford equal justice to all in their private differences, class considerations not being allowed to in interfere with merit. I'm sure these words and our, our fundamental principles uh, uh, based on the Magna Carta and established through international law and treaty obligations would seem to be all but forgotten when the 16 counter-terrorism officers from the City of London Police raided a residential property, seemingly, because this is the cause and concern of my constituent, that it seemed to be in the interests of more powerful and wealthy business interests, which were concerned about the effects on reputation and sought to challenge, as far as my constituent is concerned, who is indeed a mere plumber, the interests of free speech, and from what he would say, the interests of truth. One could have a view about the appropriateness of how he went about it, one could criticise it, one could say that's not what should be done. But the fact that those actions were criminalised uh, to the extent that they were and that they uh, used the actions they used and the police decided that they needed to use the resource uh, has to be, uh, the question has to be raised, which is why it's come to this chamber. And this is a, a fundamental issue of wider context in our legal system. Myself as a, a practicing lawyer is concerned, but it's something that should uh, be of real concern to all honorable members. I, know, I don't need to remind uh, this chamber and the House of the recent super injunction controversy and the complexity added to them by Twitter and indeed the open platform social media that provides that forum. And I believe the the key issue really there in that debate uh, was not uh, necessarily just the, the affairs and the, the scandals themselves, but the fact that our legal system uh, sought to particularly uh, support or indeed uh, some would say protect those individuals, those individuals of some privilege who were able through wealth and influence uh, to seek to protect their uh, reputations and indeed their future incomes, regardless in some ways of the consequences and the human collateral that that's invoked. Andrew Suka, it seems that my constituents' experience is not indeed a lone one. Um, since uh, the, having secured uh, this debate, I was contacted by Dr Howard Fredericks, who was similarly charged with harassment for a website exposing misconduct, as I understand, by officials at Kingston University. Even though, as I'm also informed, the Kingston Police found no evidence of harassment, the CPS went ahead with a case against Dr Fredericks in the same way that uh, the CPS uh, decided not to uh, take account, as I understand, of Sussex police advice and a case was mounted against Mr Cudder, Mr Puddock. In both cases, the, the common factor would seem to be the case that there was uh, people, institutions of influence and one would have to say that the concept of the rule of law uh, has been, been challenged. Those are two examples. There may be more, uh, which, due to the underreporting of magistrates' cases, can go unnoticed. But the point of this debate is that it should not go unnoticed by this House and, indeed, uh, by the government. The disproportionate nature of, my, of the response to my constituents' case does raise fundamental question, questions, which I don't, I don't believe can be cast aside as uh, an operational blip it does cast a real shadow over uh, the way we do respond to issues, not least issues of free speech, which become much more complex, but um, also as important, whether it's on the internet or whether it's outside, offline or online. The issues raised by my constituents case of free speech and indeed the way in which the uh, uh, prosecuting authorities enforce 
uh, particularly in relation to the internet, are of importance and wider uh, significance. Whether it be through uh, cyber stalking or online harassment, it's important to look at how that is applied and how guidance uh, really does, um, does affect these issues. We need to recognise that as far as Mr Puddick's case is concerned, there is no suggestion that uh, his comments, in fact, on his website were untrue. Um, the prosecution of his comments, effectively, was the argument that the repetition and spreading of the factual points amounted to harassment. It's important, perhaps, just to make clear at this stage that I entirely agree with the government's policy and approach in relation to this issue. Uh, the case law and policy makes it clear that illegal uh, it's illegal offline as much as it's illegal online. And so when we have cases and some awful cases that uh, do become apparent of cyber stalking, they should pro properly be prosecuted and punishable with the full force of criminal law where it occurs. Indeed, if an individual persistently contacts or attempts to contact a victim, uh, which the court concludes is a course of conduct amounted to harassment, then quite properly, uh, the police quite proportionately needs to follow through uh, where the evidence leads them and prosecution needs to properly follow where it's appropriate. And that should happen regardless of whether this occurs in person or through online social media. I also recognise that there is in place uh, sound guidance in relation to cyber stalking and also in relation to harassment. And I would <coughs> invite the, the Minister after this debate to be able to consider that guidance and whether it is fit for purpose, um, whether it is appropriate, particularly taking account of how <laughs> it seems to have been wholly misapplied in the case of Ian Puddock. Quite rightly, the government is looking at areas of vulnerability of, of young people, of those with disabilities who need particular protection when it comes to dealing with internet. And we do need to recognise that we have a particular strong duty to those people, and it's right that the government, in applying the guidance, is looking in those areas. But we also need to ensure that uh, that fundamental pr principle of equality of law is being applied across the board. <coughs> and it's the case, and it's pretty clear from the account that I've given of this case, that um, the proper guidance and application of that guidance is far removed uh, from what happened in Mr Puddick's case. He was told that he was not allowed to put up his web website because effectively it damaged the reputation of another individual and that this damage amounted to illegal harassment. Now, since um, this case has, uh, um, has uh, reached the public's attention and particular gaze, uh, several commentators on this case have remarked that should Mr Puddock have been found guilty, this would have indeed opened the floodgates for a number of other such claims. Indeed, I'm sure, honourable uh, members of this House, uh, perhaps in an unguarded moment, would um, would uh, be tempted by the possibility of uh, prosecuting the odd blogger who wrote an article about them that they disagreed with. Indeed, uh, I myself have had an attack website that constructed against me and dedicated to oppose me, and some would say damage my reputation. And indeed, other colleagues would have examples yeah, of yeah. different actions that have happened. But many of us um, would also recognise that there is a role in place um, for the law, and also the civil law, and no doubt the law of libel and defamation has a role to play. And I welcome, indeed, the, the government's attention and review in the area of super injunctions, looking at how we can properly ensure that these whole areas of privacy and libel and defamation are brought fit for modern-day purpose. But I'd also welcome a proper look uh, at the current CPS guidelines and how they apply in all these different circumstances. And what my call is for is for a level playing field, a, lego, a level playing field that has been established uh, over all these years, and for what, one which this country rightly is proud to promote and to apply. I therefore hope uh, that, on behalf of my constituent, that his case um, sets a precedent, or perhaps at least a marker, that these websites and blogs um, should um, be able to be properly um, um, looked at in uh, the whole context of a proper appropriation and, and proportionate application of guidance and both criminal and civil law. And it's important that uh, in the rapidly developing technology that uh, is uh, online, 
that we ensure that the government also in its guidance uh, does allow for a proper clarity so that we don't have situations that happen that happen sadly to the detriment of Mr Puddock.